Hey guys, Mars Thinking here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And so last night on Twitter, uh, when this video goes up, it's going to be about 24 hours ago exactly. Um, I made this tweet. Uh, shout out to my boy Minato, who is the main one that I saw who did this. Um, and obviously everybody like gassed his tweet and it got a ridiculous amount of likes. So I should have expected the exact same thing to happen to me. Um, but after he did his one, obviously a lot of people saw it. I had a lot of people asking me uh, to do one, especially because uh, I commented on one of Truth's tier lists that he posted yesterday. And then I made kind of like a bit of a meme post about how I've made a lot of takes over the years that people considered very hot, which now all of a sudden everybody just agrees with. Um, so, you know, I kind of... I guess I know what I'm talking about is basically what I was saying. And so, again, because of that, a couple more people asked me. So I figured, you know what, why not, we'll do it. So here's the meme that's been going around uh, Twitter lately. For every 10 likes on the post, I will give one Dokkan take. I made sure to specify on here that the temperature will vary, by which I mean, of course, they're not all going to be hot takes. Some of them are, in fact, like... Siberia cold levels of takes right but it's just Dokkan takes because I had to obviously have that idea in the back of my mind that the same thing was going to happen to me that happened to Minato and then I was potentially going to have to come up with over a hundred different Dokkan takes and of course that is exactly what happened um at the time I'm recording this I've come home from work in the morning so this is like about 12 hours after this tweet was made and as you can see it has 2400 likes at the time of recording which means technically it needs 240 replies from me uh, it currently has i think i got up to like 122 and as you'll have seen in the title i was literally replying to this thread for somewhere between like six to eight hours because i was at work but it was a pretty quiet night so you know just typing away i must have typed thousands of words last night I'm, I'm not even exaggerating when it got to the point that my wrist was actually sore when i got to the point where i decided to give up plus you know i was working a night shift it was like four o'clock in the morning i was getting pretty tired so i might revisit it let me know down below in the comments if you do want to see more obviously with the fact that so many people have retweeted it it's just going to keep getting likes so it's probably going to be impossible for me to actually fully um reply to like the actual like quota but I thought, the, for the purpose of this video, I thought we would look down the list at some of the ones that people considered the spiciest, which are pretty much just going to be going by the ones that have the most comments and, like, quote tweets. Because you know how people love to quote tweet other people's takes when they don't agree with them. And we will have a look and see uh, what they are. So, I will say, um, I'm not one of these people... I, I don't make takes that I think are ridiculously, like hot and that are really dumb like obviously any of the takes that i give in this thread i believe and i will defend now obviously on twitter you only have so many category uh, characters right you can use per tweet so some of the things might need further clarification and i can kind of understand maybe people getting a bit confused i tried to word it as well as i could with the few characters that i had to use but unless i hear some like really good arguments because again like I, f I consider myself a reasonable person. I will change my mind about something if I see a convincing argument. But I stand by all of these takes. So first of all, I want to give a shout out to all these goons who uh, quote tweeted this thread so it would get blown up. So Luca Dokon, I blame Minato. I mean, accurate. Uh, <laughs> uh, literally, I don't know who that is. Um... Yeah, Thad Triv, I'd appreciate if you help our boy Ningen out. Yeah, help our boy out. Yeah, we know exactly what you actually mean. Uh, Scalabar, look at that timeline, man, spitting facts like a chat. I mean, yeah, I, obviously, I think all of the takes are good. Good old Goresh coming in. Get him. This post alone has 664 likes. So thanks a lot, Goresh, for uh, contributing to this. Uh, our boy Dokon Assets as well. Thank you. Uh, uh, I could Google Translate this. This I don't know what this means. It mentions somebody, but I don't know who they're talking about. Uh, have fun. I mean, I did ask for it. Yeah, that is true. And yeah, like Ningen Sweet, and I'll cook him on video. So I didn't realize it was only when I stopped replying to the thread that I realized that Truth made a video about Minato's list of takes. So apparently he is going to do one for mine. So I don't know if it will be up by the time my one comes out. There's definitely some ones in there that I know he's not going to like. Um, although some of them are quite far in. So I don't know how far down the list he's actually going to go. Um, but we'll see. So... Let us start by going down the list here. Um, 
I'm going to try and find the ones that I remember people picking out as being really spicy. I don't think the LR Janemba one is that spicy. I think people uh, underrated him when he first came out. And then, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so this one, I will still defend uh, to this day that Bootenks is better than Blue Evolution Vegeta. I've seen so many people trying to argue this um, that I'm probably going to try and do like a comparison video. Take a bunch of like screenshots and stuff of their various attack stats and defense on the different turns. Because again, like I genuinely believe this, right? And I'm willing to listen to arguments, but most of the ones I see are not great. So I think I still think this is true. Uh, in Broly over AGL Trunks, I feel like this is a pretty cold take personally. Trunks, I feel like the situation could be very different if Trunks had prepared for battle instead of shocking speed. But it just. It basically just puts him into a place where even on teams where he could be quite good, I don't want to run him because he doesn't link up well with other people. Like, imagine how great the rotation of him and physical future Gohan would be if he actually had prepared for battle instead of shocking speed because they get barely any key uh, together. So it's really hard for Trunks to super. I think Gohan builds up key, but it's really difficult for Trunks to super if you run them together. So I think that is... Uh... A pretty straightforward take. Uh, I think Broly is super underrated. Uh, no one, I think, really disagreed with this one. Um, so this one I saw a lot of people um, talking about here. So can I just open this in a new tab? No, I actually have to click on it. So top 10 lists, I feel, should be specified by content. So the top 10 TURs for Red Zone and top 10 TURs for ESBR, for example, would be very different lists. I mean, some people did make a lot of good points because obviously Red Zone is very difficult. The list of Red Zone and ESBR, I guess, would be a little bit more similar than, say, like Infinite Dragon Ball History or the Legendary Vegeta event compared to uh, ESBR. Um, but obviously this was just an example, right? So I feel like there are a lot of instances where this would be true. Um, the problem with trying to scroll down to find all the replies is the fact that it shows all of the other ones. Because, yeah, somebody said, like, uh, characters that excel in the red zone are usually good in ESBR. It's just harder the other way around. I mean, that is basically the case, right? Like, there are units that you could put on a top 10 TUR list for um, the red zone that, you know, you then have units like Heart Virus Goku, Super Saiyan 3, Vegeta. Like, those units would be above some of those units if the tier list was for extreme super battle road only um so i do feel like that is uh i feel like that's a pretty defendable take if you get what i'm talking about here like there are certain units who in super battle road are still godly who you would not take into the red zone and even some like of the top 10 dokon fests i feel like you would switch around a little bit like for example um agl cell being much better in Super Battle Road on the first couple of turns, I would probably put him higher in a top 10 list for Super Battle Road than I would in a top 10 list against an event where you only ever fight one enemy because then the first and second forms are not as good, right? So I feel like that makes sense, right? So this one, I know a lot of hybrids enjoyers liked this and a lot of other people didn't, but beating an event, regardless of how many turns it takes, I mean, the whole point of the event is to win. So who cares how long it takes? I don't understand this as a criticism. Like, I understand people who want to run teams that will beat it faster and do more damage. And, you know, they want to take the risk that, you know, they might catch a super on the wrong unit and die. But they'd rather complete the event faster. This take is not saying that there's anything wrong with that. It's just more addressing the fact that using it as like an insult that, oh, your team took too long to beat the event. There's no such thing as too long to beat the event, right? Unless it specifically has a mission for beating it within a certain number of uh, turns or a certain time, right? So I feel like that is pretty easily defendable. Um, let's see. I feel like the rest of these were pretty, uh, pretty non-arguable. Uh, Hate to say, obviously, but Tech Janemba, as much as I hated him when he released, I've definitely warmed to him a little bit. Um, but this is the big one, and this is one that I think a lot of people kind of uh, misunderstood a little bit. Uh, so Red Zone is the only event that anybody talks about now whenever new units come out. Um, if a unit or an EZA is not great in the Red Zone, then that unit or that EZA is mid. I think that's stupid. Super Battle Road is still a thing. Uh, we get new stages all the time. Um, Super Battle Road is very different to the longer form events. 
as we just talked about with like the differentiation uh, differentiate differentiation between tier lists so i think this is a perfectly valid point like units can be good in super battle road without being good in the red zone and then that doesn't make them bad is the only point i'm making like it's nothing against like the red zone or anything like that but i think you can't write off a unit just because they're not necessarily good in the red zone that's basically the main point that i'm going for here tech gohan is great responsible for probably the most toxicity and slash divide in the community i don't think anyone really disagreed with this like there's a lot of comments of memes from like hybrid supporters and stuff but i mean it's just true right like he's great but for some reason loads of people hate him loads of people super over hype him and just won't shut up about him which then makes other people annoyed about hearing about him so i feel like more so than any other unit he probably causes the most like drama in the community so uh, great great ape rage mode mechanic is completely pointless in my opinion um i saw some people trying to say like oh you know you could use it for like say like omega in the red zone on the turn where he's gonna super attack and you can use it to then not take any damage i could definitely see that as like one place that it could actually be useful but even cell as the example especially now like physical cell has his easy a the physical lr like rather than use agl cells uh rage mode why wouldn't I just use do his super attack for like a 10 million attack stat when he's probably going to then get an additional and then the LR cell is going to super attack with like an 8 million attack stat and then whoever's in slot 3 is going to super attack as well. Like you will absolutely do more damage without transforming. The only benefit really is the fact that you take no damage which is why I specified here that if you're free to play or a newer player so you're obviously finding some of the events a little bit harder then i could see it being useful to use but for somebody like me and like with the bo kind of box that i have i genuinely just see the rage mode as like a complete waste of time so there you go um there's a lot of takes about heroes in here obviously i had to make 21 uh, about android 21 uh best dragon ball waifu don't at me uh yeah uh, S her easy a i think is really good uh obviously not like the best Probably not even a top 10 easy A T U R, but I think it's definitely better than a lot of people uh, make out. Um, this is one of the ones I was talking about, like, this is not a hot take at all. Dokon should just start doing manga stuff. I think that makes perfect sense. Units like Super Saiyan Goku Black, Akai Goku, the buff shirtless Zamasu. Obviously, it'd be cool for them to get into the other stuff as well, but we don't know what's going on with the return of the anime. And I realise, you know, not everyone reads the manga and doesn't necessarily want to be spoiled, but... I would still rather the game has more content and if you don't read the manga and you see spoilers because you play Dokon, that's a you problem as far as I'm concerned. So uh, yeah, there you go. Need a better way to get skill orbs. I think pretty much everybody agreed with this. Uh, this is a big one that I see all the time. People need to get over this idea that just because a unit is only good on one team, it makes them bad. Like there are only a few teams in the game that can like quite easily beat the hardest stages of the red zone so if there's a unit that looks like an absolute beast on that team then obviously that unit is going to be in a pretty good spot in the meta right now um i would much rather a unit be super super good on one team than a unit be pretty good and they're on like 10 categories but six of those categories are awful and would not be able to beat like the red zone stages right like i I feel like it's better to just be super good on a good team with good link partners. But I can understand if you don't agree with that. But I don't see, I don't agree with taking it to the other extreme that just because a unit is only good on one team, that's like a detriment to them or that makes them bad somehow or something like that, right? Now, this is the most controversial one for some people i've already argued about this with minato on the timeline before i know if truth gets to this one in his video he's gonna have a field day with it because this is one of the things that i decided way back in the day when we first started our super battle road king rivalry to get all the no item runs done i consider using the app reset to be an exploit that invalidates a challenge run now i say in here because people did mention it when i last talked about it so i tried to give some of these people a free pass if you use it to beat a hard event that you can't beat, like say your, you know, your account's not the best, you've been trying to beat like the legendary Goku event with Corroded Body of Mind or whatever, because that's a tough mission for some people, and you use the app reset to your advantage to help you win, 
then, you know, good for you. At the end of the day, you beat the event, you got the mission done, you don't have to do it again. The point is if you're doing a challenge run. Because the point of a challenge run is that it's supposed to be an achievement. It's supposed to be something that you can, like, flex on other people. Not necessarily in, like, a bad way. But, like, it's like, hey, look at this thing that I managed to do. So using, like, an exploit that gives you an advantage, I don't really feel like you can then say that you did something special with that run that's all it means it doesn't mean that like you know you suck at the game or whatever anything like that but like if you if you are trying to do a challenge run i feel like you shouldn't do stuff like that and that's just me personally i don't mind if other people don't agree with me but that's my philosophy that's what i decided to do and that's why when you look at my playlist for no item runs i have every single sbr and esbr stage beaten with no items and i do not use the app reset in any one of those runs and mine is the only playlist of the uh, wannabe super battle road kings that can say that so there you go whether you agree with that or not i just think you can't really do a challenge run if you're giving yourself extra advantages but it is what it is right so um yeah units having limitations i think that's fine uh this is another one that kind of ties in with like the whole everyone talking about the red zone all the time people need to stop acting like global players don't know about the red zone especially as a way to downplay their opinions like you'll see somebody say someone will make a take where they'll be like oh i think this unit is actually still pretty good not even necessarily that they're saying they're like the best TUR or the best LR or whatever. Someone will say like, oh, you know, this unit I think is still very good. And then someone will reply saying like, oh, typical global player. Wait till you try them in the red zone. And it's like, yeah, dude, we know. Like, we've seen videos of the red zone. Like, we know what the red zone is. We know how much damage the enemy does. We've seen the stats. We know the calcs. Like, we are able to make takes about the red zone, even though we don't have it on global yet. Like, obviously, you can't really claim to be an expert if you've never played it. But it's mainly focused on this whole, like, downplaying someone's opinion. And people do that with global in general. Where it's like, Minato does it all the time to troll me. Where he's like, says the global player. And it's like, yeah, dude, I know what I'm talking about, like, half the time. Not always, I'll admit, but yeah. <laughs> Super Saiyan 3 Zeno Goku will be contender for best easy A T U R when he gets his in November. I think that's a very cold take. He's going to be awesome. Mechi Cabra could be bordering on top 10 or 15 if he gets a busted link partner. Maybe not that high because, you know, the top 10 is pretty stacked. But Mechi Cabra is actually a beast when you have his links active. It's just the fact that his existing link partners all suck. But yeah, try him out if you have him in Terrifying Conqueror's Super Battle Road. And you can see how well he compares to almost every other unit on that category. So, uh, Dogon needs a pity system. I feel like at this point, um, this is one of those takes. This is a hill that I will die on. If you don't agree that Dogon should have a pity system, I literally, I don't understand what your argument is. I cannot fathom, even with my most vivid imagination, a good argument for why it shouldn't have one. And this is what I sort of laid out here, right? Even if you only got a one-time only guaranteed pull, that would be fine. Because then all the people like Truth who want to rainbow a unit day one, they're going to have to keep summoning anyway. And then they're still going to potentially get those shafts where they have to go like 10,000 stones or whatever. But if you're a normal person, what you have to remember as well, if, you're, if you don't spend money on the game, a thousand stones on a single banner is more than a lot of people will ever do in a year on one banner so a thousand stones to get one pity copy is still a lot for some people um obviously it's not for like massive whales but even like dolphins i guess i always say mini whales but like dolphins if you're somebody who only ever buys sail stones nowadays celebrations only come with about 500 stones worth of sales unless it's a big celebration so that's not even enough for you to get pity so yeah i, I don't understand any argument why it you shouldn't have one like, obviously they want people to continue playing the game, especially people who do spend, because they want you to keep playing and keep spending. But you should not have to go, like, 4,000 stones without pulling a copy of a unit. Like, my good old Int Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta debacle during the anniversary. Int Margin Vegeta took me 2,000 stones to pull the first copy. Like, that is just actually ridiculous. So, I don't honestly understand. This is the one take where... 
I don't, I don't even, I don't want to sound closed-minded, but like this is the one take where I do not see any argument against this. But I mean, if you've got one, feel free to let me know, and I'll let you know why you're wrong. But there you go. Active skills that can't be used until turn five or later are fine. Longer events exist, and unless the unit needs their active skill to be good. You don't have to use it in every event. It's not the end of the world. Um, Int Broly is a good example. People will be like, oh, you can't use his active skill until turn five unless you get like the quad supers on turn one. It's like, yeah, and? His active skill is like a one turn massive attack buff. So in like a longer form event, his active skill is meant to be used as like a finisher. So who cares if you can use it on turn three? You probably don't want to use it on turn three. So I think there's a lot of good examples for that. Um, this is one I know a lot of people don't agree with, STR Goku and Gohan over AGL Cell. Although I do clarify here that I think it is very close. Uh, for me, their team has better slot 1 options until they become one themselves, which obviously they do. Whereas Cell never becomes a good slot 1 unit unless you're just relying on him dodging, which he can't do in certain events. So, uh, STR Kid Buu, I've said this before, but STR Kid Buu is a lot closer to physical Goku than a lot of people talk about. Uh, when he came out on Global, all we'd heard about for months was how he, Goku was the best TUI in the game and he was absolutely cracked. Uh, I didn't really hear many people talking about Boo. And so then when I tried him out for the first time, I genuinely was like Im impressed at how good he was. So I think that's a pretty defendable take right there. Uh, STR Super Vegeta is still a go. I don't, I don't understand the slander for him. Literally, as I said here, he can't tank well in the red zone. Literally, like, almost every other unit in the game. Super Battle Road, he's still incredibly good because of the guaranteed stun. So he's very, very good still, I think. Uh, no excuse for content drought. Very easily, they can just add, con like, category missions to all the existing events. They could easily do this every week uh, with no issue because it doesn't involve any extra programming, doesn't involve any extra assets. You're literally just making missions for the categories that exist in the game already. So, farming medals is annoying for Dokkan events. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. Um, chance to guard would be fine if the game just told you at the start of the turn that it had activated. I think that's fine. Int Broly was always better than Int Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. I know some people didn't like this one. I actually made a video ages ago comparing the two. Um, and yeah, I just think that Broly is better. Like... Obviously, he stacks. Uh, it doesn't take him that many turns to be equal to Gogeta. And then, obviously, he just continues to get better and better. So, I think he is very good. Uh, he's got... They both have some kind of wonky links. And then both have good links as well. So, they're kind of evenly matched on there. Uh, they're both on, like, a variety of teams. But, they're, uh, obviously, Broly's on pure Saiyans. Uh, they have a lot of, like... They're not a unit where, like... I would say Broly is better in every single category, but I feel like Broly is better in more categories than Gogeta is better than Broly. So I've, I've kind of always thought this, even though I also really like Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. I feel like he gets downplayed a bit too much now. But um, So this was one, even though there can be many arguments that they are, I personally find it hard to call a unit who needs a good RNG to be good, the best unit in the game. I said this way back when STR UI Goku came out and then even when AGL UI Goku came out. Like, there are multiple arguments, or at least there were during the 6th anniversary, that UI Goku is the best unit in the game. But we've all had those experiences where you take him into Super Battle Road and he doesn't dodge and you get destroyed. So that's what I mean by like, I find it hard to call him the best unit in the game where if you get unlucky, you can go into an event, especially if you think about red zone where you can only try it three times a day. You could go in three times and then he doesn't dodge a super all three times and you die. And then that's your best unit in the game right there. Like that's what I mean. There are definitely arguments that he could be, but I just, I find it really hard to say a unit is the best unit in the game where if you get bad RNG, they're just not really that good. So... There you go. Uh, LR Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's active skill is the current best animation in the game. This is completely subjective. So, I mean, I'll defend the take, but it's just my opinion. If you don't agree, that's fine. I just think it is absolute fire. So, rotation locking is by far the, wor far the worst enemy attack in the game. Uh, enemy effect in the game. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. Um, oh, this one. This one, a lot of people raised an eyebrow at because I didn't specify... Uh, yellow coin LRs. So physical cell is the new best LR easy A. Yellow coin LR easy A. Obviously, uh, I'm pretty sure the Super Saiyan 4s are better than him on JP. We obviously don't have them on global yet. 
But yeah, I definitely meant yellow coin, L-R-E-Z-A. I feel like Broly has just aged too much defensively. Like, he's still good in Super Battle Road as long as he does not get hit a lot or you're using an item. But you can't use him in, like, the Legendary Vegeta event or the Red Zone. Like, you just get absolutely destroyed. In Movie Boss's Extreme Super Battle Road, if you don't have an item active and he does his double super and he doesn't get a third one because he raises defense on each super, he takes over 100k damage type neutral. So, pretty crazy. Um, this is one that I think a lot of people... People misunderstood the wording of this one. And this is, again, what I was saying about, like... There's only a certain number of uh, characters on Twitter. I didn't use all of them for this one, but I definitely could have been a little bit clearer. So, God Trunks is a beast on the Heroes team. Some people who complain he's only good on that one team, which is obviously a take we mentioned earlier. I see some of those same people talking about how Ginyu is the best TUR in the game. When he's basically only good on his team. I mean, obviously, you could use him on other categories as long as you can use him with one of the other Ginyu Force members. But a lot of people thought this I was directly comparing the Heroes team and his team, which I'm not. Or directly comparing Trunks to Ginyu, which I'm not. I'm literally just saying, if you think a unit only being good on one team is bad, you can't then say that a unit who's only good on one team is the best TY in the game. That's all I'm saying with this take right here. So, this guy should get an L uh, Awakening to LR or an EZA. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. This one, I know a lot of people... No one disagrees with this, but I'm going to mention it just for people who didn't get to see it. Posting screenshots of you pulling the new unit on someone else's post where they're venting about getting shafted is just super cringe and just a, not a nice thing to do. There is literally no reason to ever do this, like... It's just like people on the internet who get who love the fact they can get away with being dicks because of the anonymity. Like, there is no reason to ever do this. Like, we've all been there when you get them shafts. And yeah, it is what it is with a gacha game. But it can be pretty depressing, especially if you're someone who doesn't spend a lot and you've been saving up for ages. Or you're somebody who does spend and you've spent a bunch of money. Then it always feels bad to not pull the unit that you want. And sometimes it helps to just vent a little bit. And you don't need other people coming up and rubbing it in your face that they got the thing that you didn't get. Like there's literally no need to do it. If you're friends and you're just kind of like memeing on each other. And you know because you're friends with the person that they're not going to take it like super personally. Then I guess that is kind of different. But yeah i see like people who literally are not even like mutuals with people will do this and it's i just don't do that right just just don't do it um let's see let's see if there are any more spicy ones i don't want the video to be super long shout out to five nine gaming i thought i had to put that in there for number 59 i thought that would make sense um i do like i do still think this is true this isn't a hot take but super battle road when it first came out was like peak content in the game Watching people like Rhyme and Nano streaming the stages and getting absolutely obliterated for like the first time was very enjoyable. I watched a bunch of streams where people would struggle to beat a single stage for like the entire stream. So I do think that was pretty cool. Uh, shout out to the Gaming Claw as well. Fellow UK Dokon YouTuber who unfortunately left the scene before I uh, managed to grow my channel. I had my channel while he was still around but still, it was still very early days. Would have been awesome to have done a collab with him. So, JP and Global both have credible advantages over each other. Any belief that one is superior to the other is biased because that's the one you play. I stand by this 100%. Like, we meme all the time at each other, like Global and JP players. And sometimes it is funny to do that. But, like, they're, they're, it's the same game, but with a few differences. Some in either one's advantage, basically. So, neither one is, like, objectively superior to the other one. Like, let's all just have fun playing the same game, right? Now, this is the hot one. This is the one that got people big mad. And I think I'll leave on this one because, again, the video is already going to be very long at this point. So, Vegito's, Gogeta's, and Kefla's not being on Pure Saiyans makes perfect sense. 28 quote tweets. And none of them agree. Actually, no, I think some of them do. But almost none of them agree with me. So... A long time ago, my friend uh, Shadow, who's one of the head, uh, the head mod of my Discord, so shout out to him. Uh, he worded it in the perfect way, which I honestly can't remember. Um, I should have probably messaged him to ask if he remembered for the purpose of this video. But I thought I summed it up reasonably well in one of the replies that I posted to somebody else. Who, you know, a lot of the quote tweets are just saying, like, how does it make sense? Well, the way I put it, which 
some people just get it and some people don't. I actually did see someone reply to this explanation saying that they actually got what I meant, which is cool. Um, but if you have two different pure metals, like we have two different pure Saiyans, Goku and Vegeta. So let's say you have pure copper and you have pure zinc. That's two pure metals. And then you smelt them together into one thing. You still have a metal, but it is no longer a pure metal. That's it. That's the whole argument, right? And some people are saying like, oh, if, they're not, if they can't be on pure Saiyans, it doesn't make sense that Gotenks is on hybrid Saiyans. But hybrids literally means a mix of different things. So it makes perfect sense for the hybrid Saiyan fusions to be on hybrid Saiyans. In fact, you could almost make an argument that Vegito's, Gogeta's and Kefla's should be on hybrid Saiyans. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but I feel like it's a better argument than them being on pure Saiyans. Now, I know a lot of people don't agree, and don't get me wrong, I would like it if they were on there, because it would be more fun for like team building and stuff, but I think it makes sense that they're not on there. So, you know... Uh, that is what it is, right? So, I don't think there's any super spicy ones after that. Um, there's still at least 50 to go at this point. So, um, make sure you check out the thread. It's probably got even more likes since than we started. Let's actually scroll up and see. Because we were at like 2,400, weren't we, or something at the beginning of the video. So, I will revisit the thread because I'm working again tonight. So, let me know. Yeah, see, we've got another 35 likes in the time that's taken me to record this. So, let me know what you guys think down below. Like I said, I don't know if Truth's video is going to be out at the time that this comes out. But I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Um, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. So, that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been The Masked Ningen. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.